Deswegen, weil wir zeigen wollen, dass es eine junge Dynamik ist. My name is Benedikt Böhm. My friends call me Benny. I'm from Munich and I'm a ski mountaineer. In 2006, my good friend and colleague uh, Schorsch said, how would it be to cross the Alps from my backyard because he lives in Ruppolding, so in Bavaria. We just thought about traversing the Alps. We just planned it, not totally precisely, but we started planning. He saw, okay, here along the cross Salzburg, Tirolian border, all the way, um, looks okay, to Italy, to Casa. So we were a bunch of guys racing and we started uh, this adventure together. Three days in a row, I mean, kind of exploring every day. But there was no mark, there was no track. We just thought we make it to Hochfilzen the very first day, then we might make it to Neukirchen the second day, and then it should be possible the third day, but nobody knew back then. We made it in 12 days, but it was very, very painful. We had blisters, we were really exhausted, it was really long days. We started in the night, we came back in the night uh, every day. Wow, it was very long, two and a half days. I remember that we were really, really happy when we finally reached, and not everybody reached it because one had to give up because he, his blisters were too big. Great, but very painful project. Sensational team, and the Passion Christi tut gemeinsam nur halb so weh. Well, I grew up into performance, endurance sports as a cross-country skier and speed was in my DNA. I was used to competitions, to races, uh, to cross-country races. And from cross-country skiing, I, I grew more and more into ski mountaineering. It's a very similar movement. And I found ski mountaineering much cooler than, than cross-country skiing and I could use both. And I fell in love. I fell in love with the sport and I fell in love with competitions. and. And after my studies, I got into the German national team of ski mountaineering and I did all these races of the Grand Course, you know, from PDG to Metzalama to Adamello. Yeah, I was so dedicated that I also said I want to make this my, my living and I started to work even for the company which produces the gear for, for ski mountaineering. Behind speed there's so much more, there's so much more. If you want to be fast, um, it's about a perfect preparation. It's, um, it's about being super efficient. It's about the perfect um, state of flow. So everything is so well prepared and your material, your training, your physical training, your mental training, everything um, comes together to get with your technical support that you um, are allowed to move fast. Speed for me is, um, it sounds, you know, it sounds easy and sometimes it sounds hectic or whatever, but exactly the opposite. I learned that if you want to be fast, you have to go slow. But speed also became a different dimension to me when I started to climb 8,000 meter peaks because we are talking about the, the death zone, we're talking about very little oxygen, so there's a great lack of oxygen where, um, where you always, you never feel good, um, you die sooner or later, you're up there um, and the longer you stay there, the more risk you have. So being fast up and down on an 8,000 meter peak means also that I reduce my risk in the death zone because maybe I spend only, I don't know, 10 hours or 15 hours or whatever in the death zone as opposed to, I don't know, two days. Ein Stückchen ist es noch. Was ist das mit dir, oder? Fällt wieder. Wie fühlst du dich? Als Frage. Wir dürfen nur ankommen und dann noch schneller runterkommen. Zwei Minuten trennen uns. Let's go up. 
35. Genau, 8 Uhr. Mal recht vorsichtig, bitte. Und da geht es noch einen ganz schmalen Grad. Links 1000 Meter nach China runter, rechts 1000 Meter nach Pakistan. Und haben wir beim Aufgehen, beim Aufsteigen schon gemerkt, dass es da eine ziemlich heikle, heikle Situation noch im Abfahren geben wird. Okay. Wie ist der Schnee? Die Pfeife auf. You find me in China. Was ist Ja? Hat sich halt hier am Seil. During my, let's say, entire mounting, mountaineering career, I was, um, I was confronted with death, you know, very soon during my first expedition in 2005 already. In, uh, in China, during Mustagata, where we, where we um, kind of met two people on 7,000, I don't know, 7,000, 200, 300, which were frozen to, to death and they lost away and we tried to rescue them. One was, was already dead, another one we tried to carry down. And this was my, I, was, I don't know how old was I, 20, 25, 26, I don't know. And of course, many other incidents happened, avalanches, um, big avalanches, people, 11 people died, etc. on Manaslu. And, And of course, there's you know there's scars which stay which they stay forever. Especially if you lose, for example, your best friend, you know, Basti, who I did a lot with, and I have to be very thankful for all the for all the time together and for everything he taught me. No grad has him tight, 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 tight. The schönste ist, ist heute der 22. September. 2012 ist. Das heißt, heute ist Wiesenanstich. Also an alle, die, ja. an alle, die da feiern, ich wünsche euch viel Spaß. Wir denken an euch. Zminge! Mord Zminge! Ja, ich bin viel lieber hier. Ja. Ich bin echt viel lieber hier. Auf 6.500 Meter am Manas fucking Lu und drehe mir die scheiß Füße ab. Fuck. <lacht> 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 Da gab es einen riesen Donnerschlag, richtig laut, Lawine, schon so, wow, dickes Ding, äh, große Lawine. Ähm, haben uns noch gar nichts dabei gedacht, aber als 10 Sekunden später oder vielleicht 15 Sekunden später so eine richtige Druckwelle ins Lager kam, so eine richtige, wie plötzlich Sturm. Also von, von jetzt in eine Sekunde plötzlich Sturm. Diese, diese Luftdruckwelle, die reinkam, die hat uns dann voll alarmiert. Also war klar so, wow, die ist hier die Lawine. Devastation, huge avalanche, tents, everything. Massive. Yeah, as a mountaineer, I guess, um, I developed over the years a more natural relationship with death. I learned that death is, is part of life, you know. We all today have in common that we will die one day. And my motivation was never to die, that's for sure. What are we doing now? I don't have to worry about it here. So you shouldn't have it. Shit. I had also thought that the flag is already there. There is a total blank. Can you tell me? 
Der Schnee ist echt gefährlich. Das ist absolute oberste Lawinengefahr. Ich habe keinen Bock, wegen der Lawine drauf zu gehen. Das ist der eingeblasener Schnee direkt auf dem Eis. Und da hinten wird es noch steiler. Und das macht einfach nur BAM! Der ganze Hang ist weg. Ganz ehrlich, die 250 Meter will ich nicht riskieren. Wir haben so oft Schwein gehabt und haben diese ganzen Sachen überlebt. Vielleicht sollten wir auch mal Tabu zahlen. Das macht mich fertig. Das macht mich jetzt fertig. Okay, Fälle ab und ab. Das ist einfach nicht weg vergessen. Nie wieder. Ah, ah, in, den nächsten, ah, in den nächsten zehn Jahren auch kein Nippa. Ah, Yo! The most important thing I want to give to my children is that the time we have here on Earth is the most valuable thing. These 24 hours we have day by day by day, um, I think it's also an inspiration for, from, hopefully for my kids to, yeah, to join me and to come hopefully with me. This would be my big dream, to have the kids one day together with me and they say, hey, you want to go, I don't know, climb an 4,000 uh, meter peak or 3,000 meter peak or maybe it's only 2,000, it doesn't matter, but as long as they want to go out and experience um, this world and, and going out there and, and explore. I think I started with the idea for in 2019. I said, uh, hey, what about, you know, what about Hannibal? Can we not do Hannibal again? Benny was kind of, yeah, let's do something. We have such a great winter again. And why don't we do this and that? And, and I said, ma. Okay, but if we do it, we do it nonstop, you know, because we cannot just do the same. We have to do it nonstop. And they were like, uh. I mean, I'm, I'm not able to do it in one day, you know, you might remember our Hannibal 2006 action and I'm happy to support you. I will put the, the team together, I would track um, the long way, I will mark it for you and we will support you as best as we can. So let's go forward. I do it and you are with me as a team and then I'm happy to do it. It was very, a very strange situation. I was coming from, from my holidays in Italy, I was coming um, from the family, I had to go one day earlier on Friday to Ruppoling. And when I got there, I felt like in a hospital. I mean, from these 10 guys who prepared the route and who were doing the track and who were preparing everything, it was a little bit uh, scary because I thought, what the hell is going on here? We got some, some stomach problems, <laughs> to put it mildly. And uh, so one started and then if you work from um, breakfast to, to dinner all day on the tracks and uh, you kind of, it's, it's strong on your body so you, you feel tired and then it's kind of the infection gets you easier. Originally the plan was that always two people are with me, you know, on the route. So like a staffetta, always two guys are, are with me on the different sections, but now nobody was left. Okay, we have a problem, we had a big problem, but then we had to improvise and, and, and it was working. And suddenly, one after the other, after 24 hours, got up again and again, and they all made their way.
he loves challenging himself, you know, himself. And um, I'm sure he's going to suffer a lot. Like, he's going to suffer from his feet. We will have problems with the snow, with the skins. Conditions were sometimes snowing, but in general, much better than I personally expected. Buongiorno! Hey. It's a huge challenge, but I think that's what Benny likes, huge challenges. The main difference between him and many others is that he doesn't conform just with saying, let's do it again in three days or let's do it in two days sleeping, no? He said, no, no, if we do it again, we do it well, like really challenging. I learned that I have a certain talent in endurance, I would call it, and um, I worked very hard also for that. And then it's about the potential, you know, it's, it's, it was also the, the question in the Transal project, even though it was not an 8,000 meter peak or something, but also for me it was the first time to go 210 kilometers non-stop. It's a lot, 210 kilometers, you know, which is already a lot for me with a car. It was the question for me, how is my body reacting on that? Is my body doing okay or do I have a total breakdown or do I just have to stop because my body maybe, my muscles don't make it or my, my blisters are too big or the pain is too big? At the end it's gonna be a lot of fun. Well, I have a lot of fun uh, practicing this, this activity and also had a lot of fun my whole life trying to perfect being fast. It will never be over. For me, it was always fun to, to move towards a target, you know. So the target is there, but even the, the way to the target was always fun, especially if you have a team um, where you share also the pain and, and all these kind of things. Um, I always had fun. This is the ski handle, right? Yeah, this is the right of the ski Jetzt schau mal da hinten rein. Dann there hin. Da you go there. Da, irgendwo in der Gasse, da hinten. Das muss man nimmer sehen. Da hinten, irgendwo. Ah, geil! Jawohl! <lacht> <lacht> Juhu! Wow! After the first half, I realized that I have really bad blisters. Oh, and I knew it's not gonna get better because there's gonna be another two parts like that, you know, very long. And then I thought, I can waste my energy now fighting the pain, but it will not go away. It will become worse every step. Or I can just say, I accept the pain. In the moment really where I, where I said to myself, I take it on, it became better because I didn't waste energy to fight the pain. Then I got into running shoes and I felt a little bit better, and, but still, yeah, a little bit strange. The night was coming, it was a little bit clumsy and I don't know. And then it started raining, really pouring, you know, like raining. And I was totally wet until my, my underpant. Ah, herrlich. Ich geh jetzt noch Nebel rein. Und in Schneefall. Schneefall, Nebel. Und nass. Will lieben. Und dunkel. And that was a moment where I thought, oh man, shit, what? <laughs> do we really have to do this? <laughs> it rained during the day, everything is frozen. Some stones there. Yeah. Yeah. Is this a sheep alarm? Is this a sheep alarm? We have kind of a bike. I thought a lot on, on, on how should I focus my, 
my part of the action with Benny and I think it's very important that I support him also talking to him a lot and at the end that's what we like spending him time together in the mountains so hey Benny hey, you remember in 2006 this place no this way. Hmm? everything started the passion of Christ <laughs> we were all fucked up with the feet here <laughs> uh, right. Needy bloody feet in the kitchen. <laughs> and Nicola Bonnie was asking, what? what did you say? Passioni Christian, no? Oh man, here we are again. Oh, 13 years later, uh. back in the field. Passioni Christ. <laughs> <laughs> we know this. <laughs> it's almost two o'clock a.m. Fiesta! At the end, it's, there's not much fun. I mean, it's, it's just painful. It needs a lot of uh, physical strength and mental strength. I call myself not only a colleague, but also a friend. So I try to support him by being there for him in case of whatever happens. Before the last summit, I thought, why is it so long? One of my friends told me it's only eight kilometers and, and, I don't know, 500 altitude meters. And after eight kilometers and 500 altitude meters, the summit was still very far away. My energy is, is going out. I'm, I'm run out of energy and then I had to stop. I really had to quickly to drink and eat something. And distance, as long as the distance is, you can, you can be complaining and being angry. It doesn't help. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't help. The only thing I promise to myself at this point is that I will never tell my kids anymore, it's only five minutes, it's only five minutes, it's only five minutes. Without these guys, without the team, I wouldn't have made it, at least not in this time. Now I think Javi and George were very, very touched by this moment because it, it, as it often is, it started with a little idea and uh, while we're having lunch we often discuss things and this the idea started and four weeks later, you know, it was realized. Following the same original track from 2006 with uh, half of the original crew was kind of uh, emotional. They were, they were also really touched and then again it was again a strong moment in our friendship. It's a gift to have such friends and it's a gift to have these guys have been with me on the trans side.
Well, family, I think, is, is for me the base for everything. You know, um, if I think about my the family I was born into, I'm the fifth out of six children. So um, I come from a really big family, and and I think this was the base for everything. You know, it's, it's the base like a tree needs a base to to grow. In this project, it was really about um, thinking maybe about the kids which didn't have that luck to, um, yeah, to be born in, in, in stable families, to have that solid base to grow. And that's the reason why we connected. And I personally, this was a big wish of mine, to connect this project to, uh, to a higher dimension, you know, not only to run fast, but to say, yeah, to run for a good purpose and to run for disadvantaged children. It was really nice, I have to say, because you see where the money actually goes to, you see the kids. Yeah, it was quite, quite touching, I have to say, and also very nice to, to finish the project in this way. Now the project is finished. My name is Benedikt Böhm, uh, my friends call me Benny, and I'm from Munich, and I'm 40 years old, 41 years old, shit, <laughs> I, I started to get okay. My name is Benedikt Böhm, my friends call me Benny, I'm from Munich, I'm 40 years, fuck, <laughs> because I don't want to be 41, you know, it's, <laughs> okay. Sono, sono, sono qua. Ba -da -da -da. <laughs> Summit!